I'm Tony Craig. I play Jack Huey on Do South. I am Catherine Bruyere. Hey everyone, this is Ramona Milano, otherwise known as Francesca Vecchio. This is Paul Haggis, and you're listening to Do South by Southeast. <laughs> I wish this podcast would carry me away But while talking to Squeak and Michelle get a word in edgeways Recalled over a bottle of rum on a darker south end to me To South That is what we're talking about To South Saddle up my microphone Get deep in bed, girl, a bone To South By South And welcome to Due South by Southeast. The fun's out, the rum's out, and uh, you can't see it below the screen, but my bums are out. <laughs> oh, we are having, I am so sorry. Uh, hopefully everyone who was going to join us is able to join us. We've had a little bit of an issue with my laptop for some reason, just didn't want to connect to the internet. So instead we're on my iPad, we're now on 4G. Hopefully this will sustain us. And now we've just got a thing from my iPad saying the, the battery's down to 10%. So in a second, I'm going to be handing you over to the ladies. But first of all, I am Detective Squee. <laughs> With me is... Oh, oh civilian aid Nicola. I forgot who I was. And... Mountie Michelle. <laughs> Mountie Michelle. And we're back, guys. Look, it's been a little while. Last week, we were kind of back with a special interview with Mr. Paul Gross. Come on, guys. Awesome. Mm -hmm. How the hell did that happen? Well, you That's amazing. I know. It's just been like, you know, did, we didn't expect this. You know, it just, just when we started this, I saw, I kind of can only say that when we started this, we sort of happened in one way. But on the other hand, we always said he was as lovely you know, the, such a lovely man that he would probably do it. Yeah. So it's just kind of if we could ever set up. And thanks to the magic of uh, Paul, his agent Penny, and uh, John Wright from the uh, RCW139 events, uh, we made it happen. So that was just from really, really special. And it kind of spurred us on to do another proper episode, the first for a long time. And by the way, Thomas Beckett, yes, this is NHS Michelle who missed the Paul Gross interview, selfishly going off and you know, saving lives and whatnot. Why would you do that? What? I know, um, I know. So silly. I mean, <laughs> actually, like, given that you work in endoscopy, you know, either colonoscopy or whatever you call it, I mean, you chose sticking your finger up someone's bum over interviewing Paul Gross. That's all I'm saying. But I, no, you used no. <laughs> <laughs> you used a pen, yeah, that's ow. <laughs> That one. <laughs> not that one. Anyway, look, I did not choose to go to work <laughs> and I did not stick my finger up people's bums. That's a doctor's job. <laughs> she, kind of, she kind of does. She kind of does. Sorry, it looks like I'm pointing at Nicola. She kind of does. <laughs> yeah, oh, Nicola yeah. does. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Joking aside, of course, thank you for your hard work. Yeah, of course. Much thank appreciated. You. It is hard work pushing those pens, isn't it, Mish? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you really have I've to only got one left now. <laughs> I've had to chuck the other. <laughs> chuck. <laughs> you chuck. lost a few up there, you know. <laughs> you win some, you lose some, you know. <laughs> Sometimes you find them. <laughs> <laughs> Things I don't know if, oh, I've just realised because usually I'd be playing the sound effects either through the board, which isn't on here, or through the iPad. Uh, and I don't know if I've got our usual jingles to hand here like sorry guys you're gonna have to bear with us this is like we're a bit rusty because we're out of practice and i don't think we've got any of the jingles here so i'm gonna oh. have to kind of ad lib that kind of yeah, thing yeah yeah so, uh how's it all been michelle like it's been it really, it really has been a ridiculous amount of time since we last did this we were due to do one some months back and then i'm getting cancelled then just the craziness of your job and kind of uh 
whatever we had going on with moving and all that. Uh, it's been a long while. How have you been? All right. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. It's obviously very busy. Work's been very, very busy. I'm sure you can imagine. Um, What's well, the energy not right now? I heard anything. <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the good thing is numbers are coming down. You know, I think we can start to be a little bit positive now about some... Um, this whole situation, I think things do seem to be getting a little bit better now, don't they? Yeah, I've seen the, uh, I mean, you can never trust anything. Because... I'm going to leave you guys saying about it oh, while I get a power course. cable. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, on one hand, you read one thing and it sort of tells you that the figures are, are getting better. And then you read something else and they say, oh, you know, the, the vaccine's not going to cover this variant. And then you read something else saying, oh, 80% cut, you know. You just you just can't trust anything you read, can you? You just no. don't know what's going on. So it's only when you hear it firsthand that you sort of know what's going on. Yeah, I think the cases in the hospital seem to be dropping. So I think That's we're all starting to feel a little bit yeah a bit better about that. I think our main problem is the care units are still incredibly busy, but yeah. I think on the actual wards we can see that the cases are dropping now. So. Oh. This could be the last lockdown. This could be it. Oh, have you had a jab? Uh, yeah, I've had one of them. And you were okay? I had one. I was fine, yeah. Apart good. from a little bit of a sore arm, I didn't have any symptoms. That's good. Yeah. That's good. My mum was fine as well, so she's had her first. Yeah. So I'm very pleased. Oh, I'm moving. <laughs> I might have to move with the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep, keep moving. Yeah, I feel like a conveyor belt. Hello. Sorry, I'd like to plug in the thing. He's back. Okay. Crazy lockdown here as well. I've got, <laughs> I've got crazy now lockdown. Here. I've got a sneeze. Let's bring it together. Make sure. <laughs> Quality, this is. <laughs> now, anyone who watched everything. last week and thought, "Wow, what a polished, well-run machine that this is." This is what is usually. <laughs> oh, we're back to normal. <laughs> Say hello to the person that said hello to us as well. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. There's uh, Thomas Beckett. Oh, Sarah, it's... you miss Sarah. Sarah, hello, Sarah. Sarah, I didn't mean to miss you off. That, that's very bad of me. <laughs> and Thomas, by the way, and Thomas, Thomas, hello, Thomas, who's watching, uh, we now have over 300 uh, members that's of awesome. the Due South by Southeast community. So, welcome. Thank you very much. I know you joined us, probably, you know, a lot of you, quite a lot for the uh, Paul Gross interview, but we do hope you say, we do hope you enjoy our meanderings on the episodes. Uh, as you can probably tell, we do like to ramble a bit first, but we do get some due south loving, I promise. We're so, like the Hotel California, aren't we? Once, we, once you... Uh, enter, you can never leave. No, never leave. That's <laughs> what happened to me with this one. However much you beg. <laughs> and by the way, I'm not saying once I enter... No, no, let's not, no. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Michelle, <laughs> st stop being so rude. I've got all embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Michelle... We did get a like for that, though. Yeah. <laughs> <you go>. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, also, if you joined us for the wholesome Paul Gross interview, uh, just we do get a bit, bit moody in this one, and we have a few drinks. So, look, this is more of an adult-themed kind of version of the show. So, uh, yeah. we're talking about... Put the kids there. Yeah, if the kids are there, you, you might want to catch this on Catch Up which this will be available on our uh, Facebook page in podcast form soon. And as of the next time we record, we're going to have a special, uh, we're going to have the YouTube page it's going to be streamed to. Um, as Jennifer, we're still smiling Monday after last Saturday. So thanks again. Oh, no, thank you all for watching. It was so cool. Um, oh, and also, sorry, this is going out on a slightly different link. Uh, again, issues with laptop meant that the link expired, which we were going to be going live on. So I hope everyone is watching this. And if not, I hope you're listening back to it later or watching it later. The other thing, uh, we have something called Mini Mountie Club. So if you're one of the new people who's watching this, yes. each week we induct different Mini Mounties into our Mini Mountie Club. Now, it's just a bit of fun. It's basically like our little, uh, like, a, like one of the old TV shows when they had like a Oh, and you can be an honorary sheriff to the sheriff's club or something like on kids TV, which sort of be fun. You just say, I want to be a mini Mountie and you're in. That's it. We just read out your name. We add it to a list, which Michelle has right here. I do. Yeah, of course I do. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. We just don't no, do you only have to dress up as a Mountie if you want to. Yeah. I mean, well, we want to. We just don't have the outfits yet. We're working on yeah. it. <laughs> I'm gonna We're going to get them. Because <laughs> Benton needs a wee. 
And by the way, we haven't got Paul Gross here needing all of his eyes. Yeah, we did say that when he was coming to the Hotel California. So Paul Gross is now not allowed to leave. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paul Gross. This is how glamorous we are. We're sat here on a Saturday night with a blankie. This is how a couple of old people. <laughs> I'd love to blame lockdown, but we're just just middle aged. That's all it is to it. <laughs> In the middle of due south, so it's cold and it's in the middle of due south. Is that the destination? (laughs) So, uh, Michelle, have you got your drink ready for like a very special? Yeah, um, so it's ready. We haven't got actually, Ronit. Can I find no? I'm not going to even bother trying to find the jingle on the phone. I'm just going to sing it. This again, we usually have jingles on the show, which are play through the iPad, which we're recording on, so I can't do that. So, instead, oh. Matt, the long suffering, suffering hubby, and Jenny wants to be. Oh, we'll read out yeah. in a second. We'll read out. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there in a minute. If you want to be a mini mounted tweet and suggestion, we will make you. We'll induct you in just a second. But first, yo ho ho, we're getting drunk as hell. Tell me this, we're from we're drinking Michelle. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I don't know how. Oh does dear. That. Friend of ours who, who does those jingles and, and he shreds his voice doing it. We haven't got the jingles tonight. <coughs> <laughs> no jingles. No, but that was great. <laughs> what, what rum are you drinking, first of all, Michelle? Right. Usually we're, we're I've got get... say... Yeah. Sorry. I was just going to say again, for anyone who's new, if we were together, like, you know, in, in peace times when we didn't have a, a contagion on, yep. we'd be in the same room, we'd be sharing a bottle of rum. But, mm-hmm. but instead, we're in our separate um, log cabins drinking uh, drinking alone together. So, what are you drinking, Michelle? So I've got like a little bit different because normally we go to dark rums. I've actually got a white rum this time. Ooh, what you got? What you got? Oh, Oro. Oro. Is it nice? Oh, yeah, I don't know how to. It is. It, I got this one because it was like infused with lots of botanical flavours. There was like nine different botanicals in it, so I thought I'm going to give this one a try. Um, I'm not really getting a lot of the botanicals, but it's got a kind of caramel, kind of vanilla-y caramel taste to it. Nice. Ooh. So it is really nice. It's a Scottish rum. Scottish vapour infused white rum. Mm, nice. Fancy <laughs> bottle though. That's beautiful. And Michelle, you're such a damn happy, even your drink's got to be botanical. It actually looks pretty <laughs> yeah, I know. as well. It, it looks yeah. Like, <laughs> like thin. It's hey? a thin one. It's thin, oh. but it's wide. <laughs> So it's not very girthy is what you're saying. It looks big, but it's just not girthy enough. It's like, yeah, it's, it's long, but it's big. <laughs> well, we've got more of a, a stubby round one. We have got okay. the red leg. Let's uh, the podcast, but this one we for red leg, a very, um, very caramelly one itself, a bit of uh, vanilla and ginger flavour it's got there. Well, I was thinking to myself, now, am I right in thinking, because when I bought this the other day, red leg, yeah, Right. Do you remember when we first started dating and you yeah. invited me to your birthday party when you'd organised it at a local pub? Yes, yes, sir. And I turned up and you and Michelle were shit faced in your yes, yes. in your studio. This is very true. <laughs> was it this you were drinking? No, it wasn't. It was Unicorn's it Tears. Part? No, it wasn't. We had oh, you... Phoenix Tears. Phoenix Tears, sorry. Phoenix, it was oh. a thought because it made me think. Phoenix Tears. I, might... I think we might have had some of that as well, though. I think we'd had I mean, quite it's a possible, lot. Possible, isn't it? It's possible. I <laughs> you were absolutely plastered. Yeah, that's true. I think we were on our very Based early on true dating. Story. <laughs> the other thing we've got now, there isn't a fancy bottle to show you, but we've got these fancy cocktails. Yeah. Because no, no, no. uh, we ordered uh, takeout for supper from the Black Phoenix, which is a fine restaurant nearby us here in Southampton. These yeah, called, we do have straws. These are called Ruby Soho. Which, no, it is not the name of a local hooker, it's the name of a cocktail. <laughs> Ian likes to liken it to the name of a hooker, so I'm thinking at some point of your life... Oh, Ruby you Soho, that would be a high-class... Wouldn't Ruby Soho be a Ruby Soho be a, a high-class hooker? Do you mean you can't afford her? No, oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> then he oh, tried, but he didn't have enough. <laughs> you have to save up all year for a night with Ruby Soho, I'm telling you. Yeah, you get saved then. <laughs> What's in, the, what's in the cocktail? Uh, the cocktail, I don't fully know, but I know it's banana, banana, banana liqueur. Let's get a bit of banana. Um, I think there's like cherry aid, I think. So we're a bit sketchy on details, but it's very nice. 
But you know what? Who? Oh, one minute. Do I have to drink rum as I only have vodka? No, no, drink it. Oh, like, have a drink. Yeah. Whatever you've got. Holiday drinks, whatever. And by the way, if you're in an earlier time zone, we won't judge. It's nine o'clock here, so it's fine. <laughs> Still counts. Bit of afternoon drinking on Saturday. Nothing wrong with that anyway. I think everyone yeah. must be past midday by now, unless you're in Australia. So if John's I mean, watching, you know, breakfast rum. I was going to say, it's quarantine. Not every, isn't everyone starting their day with um, booze now? I think yeah, so. This is the yeah. norm, isn't it? So uh, that's what rums we're drinking, or what other cocktails and bits and bobs. Now we get on to the serious bit, business of Mini Mounty Club, eh? Hey. Hey. And by the way, <laughs> that jingle is usually done by a bona fide Canadian, so we're not, we're not appropriating no, the A it's there. Not, not, that's not, yeah, it's not offensive. Hopefully, anyway. Offending. Offending. Yeah, we were not like to offend anyone. We don't anyone. want to offend anyone. <laughs> we don't mind offending people. And but by the way, offend. I'm pretty sure Blaine also wrote A on the credits there, not me. Pretty sure it was him. <laughs> so, uh, Mini Mountain Club, I, I mean, I think we have to start, of course. What we've always said is if someone is interviewed on the show, like we have a golden circle where we shower a worthy recipient with gold every every Christmas time. What, what are you laughing at? I don't know. Uh, we, we, we make sure we induct into the Golden Circle some very special Mini Mounties from the world of due south. So Paul Gross is in the uh, Golden Circle for Mini Mountie Club. He is now in Mini Mountie Club, Mini Mountie Club. What number is he? 108. <laughs> oh, I love it. The star of the show and he's 108. Like, we're, there's no Mickey take. It's just kind of fun. Well, yes. <laughs> Do you know what? And we've inducted you at Christmas time, didn't we, Michelle? Or are you just in the Golden Circle? Uh, I think we no, inducted I think I'm already in it. Aren't, aren't we already in it? No, I'm pretty sure we, we never not... let m myself or you in the regular Mini Mountain Club. But at Christmas, because you've been an NHS nurse, we allowed you, uh, allowed you into the Golden Circle. Nor am I. You're in standard Mini Mountain Club, but only because you were a friend of the show before you were a member of the show. So I'm in economy, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. Well, you've got champagne. No, I've got neither. Away. I'm in neither club. Yeah. I, I'm not worthy of either of those honours just yet. I'll sit with the, the decent people. Who are they? Oh, no, no, of course. These <laughs> lovely people watching. You're the decent people. I am, you're right. <laughs> Michelle, have you found yourself yet? Um, no. I just found Paul Gross. Ah, oh, what He's number was there. that? We've already decided to put him there. Where did we he was number thirty. 39. Really? Yeah. Oh, I remember we made him a golden circle mini match. We already made him yeah. a golden Okay, we must yeah. have been on one week. Oh, <laughs> we might have been, yeah. Just felt like you needed Have to. you found the golden circle? Yeah, I've got the golden circle here. So I got distracted. But yeah, I've got the golden circle. And Paul Gross Yeah, so I'm in there. And as Paul Gross is in there. And we have yeah. John and uh, Stefan from RCW 139 events at Christmas. Yeah. Okay, just establishing where we're at. So um, so have you got anyone to add this week, Michelle? Because I've got two people that I had ready to add. So there's Matt, the long-suffering hubby, and Jenny. Uh, I'm guessing they're both Kent, if, if they're husband and wife. So Jennifer and Kent and Matt Kent, welcome Yay! to Mini Magic Club. What numbers are they? Oh, oh, so they're 108 and 109. And this is Benton coming in to say... Oh, hello, Benton! Benny! Jennifer. See, he's... he's, he's he doesn't come and welcome everyone at Christmas. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, he's the Jennifer. He's the Jennifer. Come on, 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 Jennifer. Come Obviously, Minnie Mounties make him happy. Yeah. He loves Minnie Mountie Club. Now he's up, taken over from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just taken your spot. <laughs> you Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome. Yeah, Benton is happy. Well, you Anyone else? Again, again, if you're watching, you want to be a Minnie well, Mountie Club, just Benny, send us a message. Benny has somebody. Benny would like to add Arno and Dougie. No, we've already had them, haven't we? Have we got Arno and Dougie? I believe we've already got Arno and Dougie in the club. There is best pals. There's so many to look through now. This is a problem. And also check for Sarah Kirk and uh, Thomas Beckett. If you would like to be. 
Yeah, they've they've added comments. We're going to assume that you. I mean, please do send us just a yes if you want to be in the club. But I think Sarah already is. I'm not sure though. Uh, so the so dog was there's Rio and Dave, the dog. We haven't got. Arno or Dougie? Dougie. Don't think we've got Dougie. Or Arno? So Doug the doggy. Dougie. Dougie and Arno. And Benny, you've got a little hello there. Arno. Hello, Benny from uh, Sarah Sarah. Hello. Benny hello. says, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's like now. Right, so who else, sorry, after the dog? Dougie, Arno, Sarah. Uh, is Sarah on there yet? Or Sarah. Sarah's ben, on there now. Benny is not in the Golden Circle. What we've always said is like we just do that at Christmas, the Golden Circle, like special inductees. So maybe we'll add uh, add in there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you he want is to add in there? Yeah, he's in regular one. Yeah. Uh, I only discovered you guys a few weeks ago, so I don't expect to be in, in the circle yet. Well, no, oh, like the circle. Not in the circle. The circle is only at Christmas know. time, and it's only for like special members, like due South Cast stuff. But Thomas, I'm going to accept that, that you want to be in Mini Mountain Club. So Thomas Beckett, welcome to Mini Mountain Club. <laughs> oh. Do you know what, right? We're, we're, we're meant to be getting married. And I'm going to... I'm not in the circle. Oh. I, I'm not in either, I don't either Mini Mountain in Club. <laughs> I'm not in either Mini Mountain Club. Oh. And quite frankly, after that poor person's view, I might deserve to be in the Golden Circle at Christmas time. But, you know, um. we'll see. We'll see. I, I don't know. <laughs> He'll be able to commit to me. <laughs> well, me and um, Benny will have a talk. <laughs> is Sarah in yeah. there yet? Did you establish if Sarah's in the club? Sarah yes, uh, well, I've added her. Oh, cool. Okay. I so, can you give yeah, I couldn't people the numbers? Right, so the numbers so 108 was Matt Kent, 109 Jennifer Kent, 110 was Dougie the dog, 111 was Arno the dog. Uh, 112 for Sarah, 113 is Thomas. Yay! So, welcome. Mini Mountie salute to all those new Mini Mounties. Welcome to the club. Again, shout out's pretty much all you get, but you know, you're very welcome, you know, and it means you're part of the community, which is always lovely. Yeah. So, guys, uh, I think that's all the shout outs and everything out, out of the way. That's all the rum we're drinking. That's all the Mini Mounties. So, let's get to the episode. Michelle, which episode are we talking about this week? Uh, we are the Eggmen. Thomas, sorry, Thomas Beckett's us 113. I believe so. Was Thomas 113? Yes. Yes. 113. 130, right. If you're confused over 113, that's how many mini mounts we got. We have legit over, uh, this is, I think, episode 59, we've got 113 <laughs> mini mounties somewhere. I know, it's crazy. You only set out to get 100, didn't you, at the most? Did you get well, I said, no, 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 I said at least 100. We right. could get at least 100. Now we're on 130. I think we can beat 200 by the time we've done all the episodes of Juice South now. Sorry, everybody. That's our new target, 200. Benny? Benny's going to go. <laughs> Benny's going to go away from somewhere else, don't you, babe? From now on, it will be my lucky number. Thank you, Thomas. Yes, I hope so. That's awesome. It's very nicely said. So, Michelle, we're talking We Are The Eggmen. Have you got the IMDb there to hand? No. I ask you this every time. You'd think you know by now. I've never got the IMDb, have I? No, but I always ask I you. I can't even tell like, you. Yeah, you always, but I've never got it. And by the way, Michelle, say any of these people want to email us. What would be the email address? <laughs> um, oh, I haven't had to do this for ages. Um, <laughs> do yourself... No... Yeah, keep going. Do yeah, Alf, do Alf, do South BSE at gmail.com. Yay, it's clear readings like this why we never get any emails. Uh, where would they go? <laughs> On where, sorry? Facebook. Oh, Facebook, uh, just the Do South by Selfies um, page. No, not page. Um, it's not a page, it's a group. There you it's go. It's a group. And what's our. our uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, both the same thing. That's at um, do South BFE. Yay! Guess we're oh, the pressure! Uh, oh, where do we find our, our YouTube channel now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, yeah, we do, we do now. If you look up uh, uh, the Dr. Squeeze Show, so basically what I've done is I've got a, another podcast, our sister show, the Dr. Squeeze Show, where I do uh, fine interviews with uh, people from, like some of the Due South interviews are on there, some uh, from Canadian folks such as uh, Kevin Hearn from the Bare Naked Ladies and uh, loads of other stuff. Uh, if you go to the, uh, the YouTube group, uh, YouTube page, now I'm messing it up. YouTube page for the Dr. Squeeze Show. You can see loads of videos from uh, Due South by Southeast. And we're going to be adding more like this video. Hopefully, we'll yeah. there. Oh. Okay, I think we just butchered, just about butchered everywhere where people can find us. Michelle, have you got yeah. an MDB up there? No. Yeah? <laughs> no. No, I can't get it up. Do you want me to get it? <laughs> we did. <laughs> oh, it happens to one of us. You want me to? Yeah, or? you get it. Okay. You know, have you, you not got the app? No. Okay. So, while we get up the details, uh, Michelle, like, uh, how did you find this episode? Uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it, it was a really good. Yeah, it was a really good episode for Thatcher. I thought. I thought we got to see yeah. a lot more of her, and um, kind of they made her a little bit more kind of human. In this, episode, it, I thought. this is definitely a big kind of Thatcher mellowing episode because as it gets in now, this is where we see her and Benny, you know, maybe start a little romance. Mm -hmm. it kind of feels like that's where it's going. Okay, so um, Nicola, in your own words, without of course looking on IMDb, what would you oh, say the course. plot of this one is? Well, just off the top of my head, of course. Uh, after trying to prevent an accident, Fraser is sued for millions by a down on his luck egg farmer. But Ray discovers the farmer's ulterior motive to pay off immense gambling debts. See, just, just what my thoughts were on it. And uh, who was this directed by and written by? Well, let me just tell you the rest, actually. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ray and Francesca clash over a lottery ticket. Now, bear with me a sec, because I'm just going to have a little think about the questions you're asking me. So it was directed by George Bloomfield, and the writers were Paul Haggis... Oh, creator. very many there. Well, no, created by Paul Haggis, so story by James Kramer, Kramer. and telly played by Peter Mohan. Uh, uh, and Michael Tavisham. Oh, Ma Michael Tavisham. Sorry, I didn't mention that. Yeah, him see? Uh, I believe uh, Bloomfield is the director which uh, Paul Gross was saying last week uh, has passed away fairly recently as oh, well. So a uh, big uh, salute to him. Mm. Now, mm. Uh, this is one of those episodes where I did thoroughly enjoy it as all Due South episodes, but isn't kind of like the one of the most exciting for me, but it's a kind of a, a, a what Due South does in stock and tra trade, which is these wonderful morality tales, of course, and kind of, it's a classic Benning trying to save someone, which I always appreciate. And there's lots of kind of stuff where it's uh, some lovely moments between Benny and Ray, which is always good. And as you say, like that Thatcher mellowing, which we start to get here. What did you think, Nicola? I just thought it was really fun. Yeah, it's just like you say. I mean, it's it's probably I don't know if you class it as your favourite Juice app, but it was just really fun. I I just I, I I don't know when I was thinking about. It, I know it sounds bizarre, but I kept thinking it reminded me like a dance, like the Charleston, like which is really wacky dance. That do you know what I mean? It's just one of those jovial. I don't know. It's the Charleston of Juice South episodes. Yeah, light-hearted fun, and that's all you know. That's a good thing. I haven't got a problem with it. I, I admire the metaphor of the Charleston of Juice South. I don't know. <laughs> That's what was in my head, and usually it comes out of my mouth. So there you go. But what's in your head comes out of your mouth. It does, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't have that much of a filter on this on this show, certainly. Oh, so I'm broken in, Michelle. I have no idea what that bang is. Are they inside yeah. the house? Do they do they want to be a mini mountie? Yeah. <laughs> and Minnie Mountie number 115, Michelle's burglar. <laughs> Hello. I came to rob the house while I joined the show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let him out one day. Oh. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> Depends what he looks like, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Well, Gary's off delivering our post as well. By the way, yeah, we haven't just said about down the shops. He is a postman. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mail them out. Yeah. 
Here's a five, we'll go to the cinema. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Michelle, have you got copious amounts of notes for us because we haven't bothered writing any? You never write any notes. I know, that's what you're here for. <laughs> I know, my one job. One job I have. Anyone yeah. who's watching this who, who hasn't watched it before, what we usually do is when we're... Are you, have you quite finished, Benny? When we're sat together, we watch it together and uh, we generally shout stuff over to Michelle. Yeah, make a note of that. That bit was good. Write a note of that. Yeah. 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 So it's instead, my just notes post- now. Oh my. <laughs> no, what we're I've thinking. Got, <laughs> yeah, I've got lots, and I'm sure you'll chip in too. Well, yeah. For a start, we're the Eggmen. Of course, a Beatles reference. You're a big yeah. Beatles fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, we've got nice. nowhere to go with that. I was going to say, I don't know what you. So you'd like that. So I am the Walrus reference. Yeah, it is a great song. One of my favourites, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Michelle. Honestly. Yes. Say that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the policeman said? <laughs> further back. Further back. Further back. Further... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that, Nicola. What's our first note? Oh, the first note. Well, the beginning. I don't really like the beginning. So it starts off and you've got... Benson and Diefenbaker in the woods. So Benson's doing some like training with Diefenbaker where he's, he's training him to sniff out, what was it? I was like scent training, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, I just absolutely loved the fact that Dief, he sniffed out it's a Snickers bar. It's some, yeah. kind of, it's some kind of chocolate bar. <laughs> I think it was like Snickers. But wouldn't it have been called Marathon back in those days? No, no, in America it was always Snickers. We it was always changed. Snickers, yeah. We, we used to have marathon bars over here, which were the same Snickers, and it was called Snickers mm. in America and Canada. And then we changed to Snickers, and I think it changed back to marathon over here, and then might change back yeah, again. Yeah, we've always been Snickers when it changed. No, no, one stage it changed back to marathon, and yeah. sure there's a new story, and then it changed back again because no one remembered or cared about marathon at that stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A bit of fun with chocolate there. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I, thing I realised about this opening is, as well, I've realised Diefen Baker is the Scotty from Star Trek of Due South. Now let me explain. Or Columbo, it also works for. Pretends to be dumb, like he doesn't know what's going on, or like he can't fix it in time, like Scotty does. Like in, he goes, oh, can he possibly fix it in that time? But you've got a Scotty. Oh, okay, and just flicks a switch and it's done. Columbo, acts dumb, acts like he doesn't know what's going on, but of course he knows exactly what's going on. Diefen Baker here, He's meant to be a training. He goes straight for a chocolate bar. And like uh, Fraser's going, he's like, oh, God, no, we're, we're never going to get anywhere with this, with you training like this. But really, as soon as there is something which needs doing, Stephen Baker's always there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just like any kind of, I was going to say that dog, he's, he's a wolf, isn't he? But, you know, and then he's like, oh, you're a carnivore. Why are you sniffing out the bars? But, I mean, dogs, we all know what dogs are like. <laughs> Oh. They're very closely related, you know. I mean, they shouldn't eat chocolate though, it's very bad for them. No, it's very yeah. bad for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so typical yeah. of a dog to do that, it's like sniff out food and everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that would be training. definitely, uh, there'll be Dotty Baker, who's our other. That'd be Dotty. <laughs> oh, yeah. The gross things that they eat. And then we're not talking about And Paul. then regurgitate as well. Yeah. yeah. We did it last week, didn't we? Oh, and it God. It was yeah. very gross. Then he ate something very gross. We think he got hold of some poop on a walk. And he threw it back up in our house, essentially. That's what Benton did in our home. Our <laughs> yeah. Benton not quite as adorable as Paul Gross himself. Yes. Yeah, he just sniffs it and <laughs> not one of his prouder moments. Of course, we've been down to the river. So it was that sort of, yeah, he'd obviously picked it up down there and it was just not. Yeah, Ray stuff. thinks what that Benny puts in his mouth is disgusting. Oh. Oh, that was just <laughs> He could give him a run for his money. That, but when he does, oh, he does it in style, doesn't he? Oh. In style's one way of looking at it. Yeah, style, okay. Oh, Benny loves it. Thank you, Benny. Yeah. <laughs> poop. He doesn't care. Oh, he poop. does. He thinks it's great. It's like a beef burger to him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to move on. <laughs> yeah, Michelle, next note, yeah. please. Yeah, so the result from this training in the woods is um, 
bent and falls backwards and he ends up falling down a hole which we find out like this trench that are covered over I think it's like by cement but this one's open for some reason and he falls down it and he climbs out and that's when he sees this um egg man coming along the road in this delivery van of course he's like concerned that is you know he's he's going to drive into this trench and there's going to be an accident. So he's kind of like in the road, like waving him down and causes an accident anyway because he panics and goes off to the side. And then, yeah, of course, well, he goes... Causes, causes probably a more minor accident than would have been yeah. going into that. So he, he goes into a tree or something? He does yeah. Just, um, veers off yeah, and, but, like, obviously, yeah. as far as Benny knows at this time, the guy's just going to go in this hole and that would... If you don't know that's coming up, you kind of probably... Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause some serious harm yeah. to yourself. Yeah, and unfortunately, um, Benton goes behind the van, opens it up. He wants to help the the driver in there. So all these eggs just come falling out. <laughs> eggs tsunami, the world's biggest omelet. Yeah. Nick would have been out there with a skillet in no time. <laughs> yeah, doing up omelets and pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Benny would have helped. <laughs> oh well, you know it's recently been pancake day. I, I of course made vegan pancakes as I'm sure you would have Michelle if you had any time off work. I was at work. So yeah. I didn't, yeah. yeah. But yeah, um Benny and Dottie helped me with uh with having it polishing off a few vegan pancakes. Very good, Benny. Yeah. See, that's me. better than the other stuff. Um <laughs> we try and encourage uh better eating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. You said you're not going to add some poo to that? No, no, I'm not. Benny. No, I'm not. We're not. Next time, then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll be doing that in yeah, the barbecue, barbecue time, won't we, Benny? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Benny. <laughs> Bless him. Uh, yeah, so after that, um, Benton heads back to the um, Canadian consulate and he goes in to see Thatcher, and there's this other guy there. And I was, was he a lawyer? Yeah, it's the lawyer. For, uh, yeah, it was the lawyer, Canada. isn't he? Yeah. Oh, no, no, sorry, the lawyer um, for, the, for the other guy, isn't it? It's the Canadian consulate. Henri, I think his name was. The oh, creepy the Canadian, Canadian guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, Thomas, I'm terribly sorry, maybe a stupid question, but will your video be on Facebook? Parental duties call, and I really enjoyed your chat. Yes, of course, yes, it'll be up here on Facebook and in podcast form shortly afterwards. So yes, yeah. please do. Uh, basically, because we've just uh, put up the Paul Gross interview, that's just gone in podcast form now, available to download wherever you get your podcast, due south by southeast, where you can also find our fabulous back catalogue of episodes. Um, and this video will be up on, on Facebook straight after this. So you can watch at your leisure, Thomas. Cool. So yeah, so the lawyer for the Canadian Lawyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yes. That's when um, Benny finds out that he's going to be sued. Well, well, not him personally, but you know, the Canadian government is being uh, sued. I think was it for ten million, ten million dollars? Well, ten million, because... yeah. yeah, ten million for some eggs. I mean, that's one expensive omelet. <laughs> yeah, but because he was claiming like, it, like for his mental health and and everything, wasn't he? So yes, he's going for ten million dollars. This is why you need to go vegan. These eggs are getting expensive. Um, I know, right? <laughs> There's some golden eggs, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and true London style, he's not having this. <laughs> yeah. He's just not going to lay down <laughs> that Canada gives ten million dollars to this guy when all he was doing was trying to save him from an even worse accident. Well, I think he would do it if he didn't have to lie to do it. Like he would go, "Oh no, this guy's been inconvenienced." Okay, yeah, ten million, of course. But he knows that isn't the truth, and that's why Benny won't do it. Yeah, he's got his values, doesn't he? Um, yeah. Yeah. So he, and then he ends up going back to. Did he go back? I think he went back there with Thatcher, did he? Well, that's the first the, time. The trench. Yeah. That just says uh, you've got um, you know one day to do whatever you're doing here, basically hours. twenty-four yeah. hours. That's, that's all you get. <laughs> and then he goes off with. Uh, with Ray because they have the scene at the station, I believe, first. Oh, yeah, 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 they have the scene at the Ray's station. selling her sandwiches, which uh, I love. <laughs> yeah. Funny it. sandwiches. It's just always kind of, it's very in the keeping of what they've established about the Vecchios, 
and Franny and Ray, this is one of the like areas they cross over a bit where you get the feeling like they do what they need to to, to make a buck. Like I think if Ray wasn't a cop, he'd be doing like odd jobs to, to get money oh, and kind of a bit this suitcase, bit that. wouldn't he? With gold watches. <laughs> he would, he would, like a jail boy. Absolutely. <laughs> would definitely be Armani job. Oh. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, so I think he goes Yeah, so, he goes back to there with Ray, doesn't he? And yeah, and the trench is covered. It's a is huge it, thing. Is it the trench bit first or is it the station bit first? I'm trying to remember. I think it might. I think, no, I think in the station, because for some reason I've got a question mark. Excuse me. But yeah, I think yeah. they're in the station first. I think they're and then the they're going to go. And Franny's selling the sandwiches and she won't yeah. give her, she's trying to charge Ray for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Ray holds her to ransom for the lottery ticket, which of course kind of comes up later. They're kind of scratch cards they're buying. Yeah. And so and what... Because he's kind of going to buy scratch cards for her. He's got and a weird then... Whereas if Sorry? he runs out of, he's got a weird system going, hasn't he? If he runs out of a product, then he thinks he's going to be lucky on the lottery. <laughs> yeah, it's a really bizarre system. Of, really, yeah. I'd run out of toothpaste, I'm going to win the lottery. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Which makes as much sense as anything with the lottery, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. And we've got, um, I, I just love the end of that scene as well, where Franny says to uh, Ray, it's, to Benny, it's like, he's my brother, I've got to put up with him. Why do you? <laughs> I often think that. And I'm often asked well, that you, as well. Well, your brother. You, you don't really see your brother much, I don't think. No, I, I, no but I'm after, often asked that by people. What about your brother? No, about you. I, well, my brothers, yeah, they're, they're a pain in your eye. <laughs> I get where she's coming from. <laughs> I assume that's what she... Yeah, you're just not annoying at all, are you? Never, never, never. 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 Not on purpose, certainly. Never. There was a nice trick I did the other day, Michelle, where uh, oh, the, the remote oh. control we've got, like our Virgin remote control, doesn't work very well. So she's trying to put the volume up, Nicola, with that. And she's going, she's, where is the other remote? Where is it? Okay, look, and she's doing all this business. I, of course, in another seat, find the other remote and start turning the volume up. And she's pretending, but she goes, oh, it's working. Then I start turning down. She goes, why is that doing that now? What's happening? Now I'm turning it down. Oh, it's going up now. The other thing he likes There was a to good do, minute of that before she realized. It was, was it last classic. night when you just wanted to go out oh. uh, all the time? <laughs> really was, was doing yes, right, like we this. know. It's just like that it was. Just like that. It was so funny. And so yeah, it's disgusting as anything. Yeah, Ray, Ray's great. Yeah, so they go when they're looking at the trench. I think well, Benny's looking, trying to figure out how the um, top of the trench is back on, and Ray's on the side, isn't he? Like scratching his like lottery tickets, um, and he wins like twenty five thousand dollars. He wins on a scratch card. And I haven't watched this episode in ages, and my first thought was like, right, how is Benny going to cause him to lose this? Because <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you didn't know, don't you? <laughs> without him having the money. The thing is, though, if yeah. I won $25,000, I would be going to claim it straight away. I wouldn't even be mucking around. I'd be straight down, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, you're not a cop. <laughs> cop in the mean streets of Chicago. You don't have time to go and cash lottery tickets at a win. I still would. Oh, I find the time. <laughs> <laughs> I always find that time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we find out that the, um, the egg man you know, the farmer. So he's got this farm of all these chickens and he's got this really weird um, experiment going on, hasn't he, with these chickens to make these low cholesterol eggs. Yeah. Um, also, he's on the brink of losing his farm as well. He loses a lot of money and they want to they want to take the farm. Yeah, that was my first thought, that somehow Benny was going to end up, uh, you know, shaming him, shaming Ray into giving the money to him I mean, for some reason. That's where my mind was going because again, yeah. I just couldn't remember. That's what I thought, yeah. And um, in the meantime, Benny turns up, doesn't he? He says, "Oh, I'm going to walk to the farm." And as a chat, you know, he's shooting at him, and he's around the yeah. corner <laughs> talking about talking about chickens. And... <laughs> yeah. he, could, like, he could identify what type of chicken it is by the sound that they make. Yeah. That's it. He's that's like, oh, so Benny so boy. Benny. Oh, that's Norwegian blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he's outside, he'll be barking at squirrels. Yeah, okay. that's a new game which Benny likes to play at our wow. new house, is bark, bark at squirrels, squirrels, which we get in our garden. 
Sounds like a fun game. Oh, he he loves our garden and he refuses to come back in oh. half the time. The amount of time I spend at the door. And of course we've got neighbours, one of which has got a young kid as well. So like I'm there going, And he just stands there and stares at us. Hey, no, he just did. He just oh, came in. Like he's going, oh yeah, of course I will. Because he knows we're on the camera. <laughs> yeah, don't try and kiss up to me. He's got to show off. You are now. Yeah, Daddy's <laughs> lying. I always come right yeah, in. Yeah, I come right back. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about people in new things. I'm in the middle of due south by southeast, Benny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what's that, Benny? Oh yeah, yeah. And of course, you get the thing coming in now. What's that, yeah. Benny? There's yeah. two children down a well. Yeah. It's just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> You get the bit there, of course, where uh, they bring in the idea of the lottery ticket as well, and like the Franny should have, have half of it. That's where that starts. Yeah, because I'm. Um, she's. Did she give him, give him money for the lottery ticket? I kind of missed that, but well, I guess that she gave no, him money he, for a ticket. She gave him money, so he was getting tickets for both of them. And his argument was, oh, of course, as a gentleman scratched hers off first, so that second half was definitely. <laughs> he didn't win, yeah. <laughs> a free sandwich. Yeah. Why do you make that sound like it's coming for something? It's it does, doesn't it? Brother. It sounds really sick. Her brother! If you, no, if you look at the gave black, her a free sandwich. If you look at the black and white of it, you gave her a free sandwich, but I did make it sound quite sinister, I'm afraid. Michelle, I see that subtle product placement. We're not advertising Apple Watches. I don't care how much they paid you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to get a little bit of commission here. <laughs> <laughs> I am loving the rainbow bracelet though. That's yeah, that's cool. awesome. Uh, yeah. Oh, where am I? There we go. Yeah, it didn't come with the watch. I bought it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um. Yeah. Sorry. So, well, well, yeah. So he goes to the hut and he's like getting shot at, and he knows exactly which which uh, chickens they are based on their plumage. Yeah. It's rather cool, and they're called. No, by their call. By their call. By yeah, their call. Yeah. By their call. He identifies the plumage. Like... Oh, you know all the birds by their plumage. <laughs> yeah, this is Nicola Bird. She's got lovely plumage, if you know what I mean. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is why we're locked down. Nothing to do with it. We've all got locked down here. <laughs> plumage. No, no, not plumage. <laughs> plumage. Who made sounds like it's meant for something else? Very like different, it, Sarah. I, yeah. She got the nice plumage. You know what I mean? No plumage, 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 like like feathers and stuff. That's the plumage. Plumage. Got that plumage going on. I like that word though, plumage. Yeah. That'd be a word in our vocabulary now. You know that, don't you? <laughs> right to get the fingers, on, my fingers on her plumage. <laughs> Oh dear. This anyway, is why I drink. <laughs> I was saying plumage. Plumage. <laughs> anyway, I don't. Oh God! I, I, oh, I think I'm going. Oh, where were we? <laughs> where were we? Uh, yeah. So he gets shot at, and like he recognizes the the call, the distinctive. <laughs> Not the plumage. Not the plumage. Yeah. Or the plumage. So obviously he shows interest in chickens, so the um, egg man kind of takes him in and he kind of shows him around the chickens that he's got and, and you know, how he's kind of experimenting to get these um, best eggs and this is how he's going to make, you know, all his money and everything. Um, yeah, so they've got a bit of a mutual interest there, so, you know, they kind of build a little bit of a, a relationship and, you know, able to help him out. Oh, and I, I think it's at this bit he asks about which came first, the chicken or the egg. Mm. And Benton says, I'll tell you later. There is actually, actually an answer to this. Do you know it, Michelle? It's the chicken comes first. Oh, so no, the egg comes first because the egg, okay. which was first uh, laid, which became the chicken, would have been laid by a different species, which laid an egg, which had the genetic mutation, which made it a chicken. So when that egg hatches, that would be the first chicken. Thusly is how evolution works. So you're pretty much saying this dinosaur come along. No, it's not a dinosaur, right? Egg, and he went, oh, you, want to have... you don't look like a T-Rex, you look like a chicken. It's not quite as direct <laughs> as that. There have been lots of iterations along the way. 
then just before the chicken, there'll be something which looks quite similar to a chicken, but isn't genetically quite a chicken. That lays an egg, which has the mutation, which makes it a chicken. And then that mutation is selected by natural selection, and thusly you get a chicken. So it's the egg that comes first. Wake drop. In fact, I've got a okay. wake drop. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't drop it. <laughs> I, I caught it just off camera as well. Just off camera, but... Mm. By the way, if, if this iPad dies, which is a distinct possibility, it's charging as we're speaking, but it seems to be going down in battery power. So if it does, I will have to very quickly switch to my phone. So if we come off the signal, please just keep talking, Michelle, and we'll be right back on as soon as we can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's get going through this, shall we? <laughs> Okay. Right. Well, so after, yeah. So after this bit of the farmhouse, then they kind of they go back to the station where they find um Francesca's chained up. Well, not chained up. She's handcuffed to um. <laughs> <laughs> she's handcuffed to a bench. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate that. Thanks, Ian, for your education. See, we've all learned something today. <laughs> Detective Squee knows where it's at. <laughs> Yeah, so poor Francesca's uh, handcuffed to a bench because she, she's been selling these sandwiches in the police station. She hasn't got a permit, so she needs to find her to pay. And I just love the way that um, Benton drops Ray in it because he's like begging Ray to kind of pay this fine and say, you know, she can go. And, you know, Benton's just like, well, it's easy for you to pay now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know the... keep it from Francesca. <laughs> the bit I like after that as well where she starts having a vote on it, saying, what do you think? Hands up who thinks I should have the money. Who thinks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pay the money. Yeah. <laughs> of course, Tony Craig, obviously wonderful to get. I love yeah. that you've got all the supporting awesome. cast for this one. Well, you, for new people that have joined, you've got other interviews, haven't you, with the cast? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you uh, haven't checked out yeah. our fine back catalogue yet, we have audio interviews with Tony Craig, or T-Dog Craig, as he refuses to let me call him, and, of course, Catherine Bruyere and uh, Romana, yeah. R R Ramona Milano. Yeah, so you've got some awesome ones. Uh, so next, maybe Ray. That's what I would love. If anyone has any in, if anyone wants to encourage him on any social media, we would love to have David Marciano on the show. That's really... And then, like, when we get into Series yeah. 3, maybe uh, Callum Rene Keith. Callum Keith Rene? I'm sorry I'm messing up his name, but we would love to have, of course, both yeah. Rays on here as we get into it. That'd be great. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah, well, uh, so, yeah, they have the vote, and uh, everyone thinks that she he should pay up. Yeah, absolutely. Eddie should. Erica, please. Yes, don't, don't, yes, uh, we want to get him. Like we, I will say that uh, I know John Wright from uh, RCW One Three Nine Events has has been trying to to help us get him. So we don't know. He is very like. Uh, uh, we have to thank John. He's been so great in helping us get some of these interviews and helping us reach out to the stars. So thank you very much. Thank you, Carly. Yeah, thank you, Carly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the scene that kind of follows on from this, just it, it really made me laugh. Because <laughs> then it goes to um, Benton's apartment and he's doing the ironing. He's iron first of all, he's ironing his underwear. <laughs> and secondly, he holds them up. And that is the stiffest pair of pants I have ever seen. <laughs> How much starch did he use on them? It's like, <laughs> solid. How did he even hold them up? <laughs> Yeah, this lady still love her, man. <laughs> well, with all the ladies which fancy uh, Benny, maybe like he needs it to be to keep everything. Maybe that's what maybe. I'm <laughs> maybe. Oh. Actually, I, it was something which I did like that Paul said last week, last weekend, was that it, it it's kind of weird to play someone who's so unaware that women are finding him attractive. And I can imagine that it's pretty difficult to kind of just completely not give out anything. I'm there. just going to call Benny in because he's... Uh... Yeah, we've got a barking Benny. We've got a barking Benny <laughs> outside. And that's not metaphor for anything. So he's got his stuff in hand. Yeah, and then... Um, By the way, pants is what um, we call boxes of shorts if you're listening anywhere around the world. Where, Benny! You know, their trousers. Yeah. Hello, Benny. Underwear. Hello. And then Thatcher is knocking on his door. So Thatcher comes to his apartment. And I love the way 
and he was like looking around his apartment and just in disbelief that this is this is where he lives, this is how he lives. And I like the little like glance at his bed. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, mm, yeah. He notices where the bed is. That's all I'm saying. But it's he also, look very fresh. Going, he comes around his place and she's going it's like, yes, lovely neighborhood, Benny. It's like you come to his place. Yeah, sure. come on, woman. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think she wanted to apologize to him because she, because earlier on, when the um, creepy Canadian lawyer guy uh, was in her office, he was um, he was being a bit creepy with her, wasn't he? And the creepy lawyer's been creepy. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. creepy cat. Well, yeah, I just named him creepy because that's what it was. <laughs> Actually, this was pretty cool. I did like the fact that it kind of, uh, obviously not cool that he was acting like that, but I do like the fact that Due South, whereas no show is going to be completely perfect kind of 30 years on, but I do like the fact that they kind of highlight some of these issues. So there's so many workplaces where women find a hostile work environment. We've kind of discussed previously where they have the relationship with Thatcher being a superior and Benton being a kind of subordinate is that cool. But, but, you know, let's face it, it is more often that women find themselves in a position where they're getting harassed than the other way around. It's just more common. I'm not saying it isn't ghastly either way. But um, I kind of really love that they kind of bring in stuff like that and they kind of mm. discuss these issues. Because there's so many women who are so powerful, like so strong, and kind of like if you see from the outside, you think, oh, they never take crap from anyone. And they have been historically and still to this day faced with this kind of bull. Yeah. Yeah. So I say it's kind of like amazing to see like a program from the 90s that's bringing this up when, you know, all the kind of issues that we're kind of seeing that people are talking about from the past coming from these countries where they were going through that. Nobody was highlighting it back then, you know. Well, it's only thing, kind of like now these things have really been highlighted. And even there were a few shows which did do the odd episode on something like this, you know, especially as we went into the 2000s. So many of those shows which highlighted them, we found out harassment was going on in those shows. So it's like just just awful. Oh. Like, you know, you hear with Joss Whedon this week yeah. and his, uh, you know, very female empowering shows. They show the women getting the upper hand with these kind of chauvinistic men. And you hear he was doing all the stuff behind the scenes. I'm so thankful touch all the wood in the world. You know, Due South doesn't seem to have that environment at all. It was a lovely family, which was encouraging, encouraging to people of all backgrounds, like, you know, all genders, all kind of uh, ethnicities and stuff. You know, that's that's why, for me, like, I think it would be so right to, for a continuation. It's because mm. it does live up to the mirror of history pretty well. Yeah. Wow, definitely. Oh, it's yeah, so oh, no. Sorry. So I didn't hear what you said then, Nicola. No, I just said it's horrible because I think you sit there sometimes and think, which one next? You know, all these things that you've watched and loved and you just don't know what's going on, do you? And yeah. You just, yeah. Yeah. A bit awful for liking the show. You know, it's part of what you've watched in the history. It's just, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, even with these shows, I think we shouldn't feel bad by still liking shows which have a positive no. message, even if the creators of it were thoroughly imperfect, as we found out over the years, mm. which is a shame. But um, I, I still think you can like the show, like the art, but maybe not so much the artist. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah don't you? Yeah, so she's um, kind of explaining to him why <laughs> she was trying to use him to kind of get out of this situation with this um, lawyer guy. Um, Oh, I've dropped my pen. I'll find it later. I'll get, I'll get, the, I'll get the endoscope out later and find it. Yeah. <laughs> you'll find another one next week while you're working. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it a wash. Go, put it in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, good to go. But um, after this scene, then it goes to the farm and the um poor farmer, he's kind of being harassed and pushed into signing over his farm. So he yeah. has to sign it over. Um, was that when Benny? I think Benny and yeah, Benny and Ray. Oh, they go back to the trench, I think, don't they? And they find the feather in the trench, they do, and it can only be from yeah. oh, plumage, yes, of one specific, yeah, that's a recognized as the plumage. <laughs> I think that's when which bird, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course, <laughs> <laughs> that <was> Nicola, <laughs> ah, that's the bird. <laughs> 
Oh, they uh, head back to the farm. Yeah. They head back to the farm, and then that's when they find out that their farmer doesn't own the farm anymore. But there's this other guy there, and they decide they've got to take these chickens. They've got to take them as evidence because there's this, you know, ongoing case. <laughs> so they they box up the chickens, put them in the car, and then they kind of head into town, don't they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is when Ray actually wants to go and cash in his lottery ticket, isn't it? <laughs> he gets yeah. so close. He gets like, so close to, to cashing that in. Um, I think they're walking to go and do it, and then they hear man, don't they? And it's not Ray's car. What is that for Ray's car? It's always getting broken, smashed, blown up. <laughs> the, chickens, the chickens were taken. Right, we're going to have to switch over cameras here. Sorry, guys. 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 Oh, that's better. Wow, it's like a hey. <laughs> I had to suddenly switch over from our iPad to the phone because the battery was about to die. Yeah, so I would like to apologize to the ears of our uh, viewers right now. <laughs> it was so smooth, I don't think anyone knows. Social distance great. Can you hear us okay still? Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, we can hear Michelle? you. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, I can hear yeah you, you need to reply when I'm asking that. <laughs> Still in the rave. Yeah, sorry. So you're going to be very shaky handheld, Cam, from now. Why? Well, you, you were cutting in and out a little bit then, but I think you're back. Are we back? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right again now. Uh, yeah, so Paul Ray, he's had the window smashed of his um, car. The chickens have been stolen. Um, but there's paper that was in the, I think, in the box of the chickens or something that's been left. And that was like a betting slip or something. Mm -hmm. Are you all right? That's all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to um, prop up the camera. Okay. Oh. Oh. There we go. Hello. Okay, we're back. Sorry about this, guys. We've done a makeshift thing now. <laughs> Again, if anyone um, can still hear us and we haven't blown out your ears, you know. <laughs> oh, no, that was... Yeah, I can, just back here. <laughs> can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Cool. Okay, where were we? Yeah, so they're looking at the betting slip that's been left behind in Ray's car. And this is where Ray gets the idea to go and see the kind of hairdresser stroke bookie that um he knew from his childhood. Is it Bert? I think yeah. I wrote it down. Bert, I really like this guy. <laughs> he was funny. <laughs> so they go in with the hairdresser. And he hasn't seen Ray since like Ray was a little kid. <laughs> and if, yeah. Hey, Sarah can hear. Um, you know, and what do people from your past like to do? Your ears are okay, Jennifer. Good. <laughs> good um, to hear. Everyone's good. We've definitely no one that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he goes um, on a bit of a mission to embarrass Ray in front of Benny. He called it, which is quite surprising. He called like Ray the quiet, soft, fat. <laughs> Kid in the corner stuff in his face, didn't he? I can't imagine Ray ever being like a chubby kid. He's so skinny. Yeah, so but I, I did. I love the fact that it's one of those moments where obviously Ray's not had a great childhood with his dad, but you see yeah. one of the kind of moments where it's a bit more joyful, where maybe he and his dad might have had just one thing which wasn't completely crap, even though his dad was there betting and kind of doing some other. <laughs> Excuse me. Some other stuff which might not have made him like dad of the year. At least it was kind of one memory which was kind of fun. Yeah. It's nice to hear yeah, that, like... that young Ray had that at least. Yeah. But yeah, I thought he was a fun character, but like all the cigars like lined up in his pocket. Yeah, he's smoking a cigar as he's cutting someone's hair. <laughs> 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 it's great, right, isn't it? Yeah, maybe he seems a bit madder nowadays. You can't like smoke anywhere indoors. And you're just smoking and cutting hair. 
Yeah, there's a guarantee oh, yeah. of that, Bob. It's if you get any of your hair singed, you get a discount. Oh, I just had a thought of him like tapping the cigar ash on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is really, really good for your hair. <laughs> it does sound like some kind of shampoo. You probably, <laughs> you probably spend lots of money buying an ash shampoo these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because hairdressers discovered it was good when they used to smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the, the downfall of hairdressers when they couldn't smoke <laughs> anymore, obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lockdown had nothing to do with yeah. it. And I was going to say, no smoking had nothing to do with Just, yeah, that. Yeah. Right, oh. so we've got our info. Yeah, so we get some information off of him. And, and then it cuts to um, Satu. She's um, in a restaurant and she's sitting with the creepy lawyer guy, having a dinner with him. She's clearly not enjoying this dinner. And I'm... Of like suggesting that it, you know she could continue to climb the ladder if she was a bit more friendly to him, you know. Oh. Like, oh. Mm, so yeah. I love it when Benny comes in though. It's like um, it's your car. Uh, it's 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 on fire. It's worrying the other cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than Benny trying to lie in this show. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. I love it. He's it's like. You're lying, aren't you? And he's like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, I know. am. He tries to lie. He's clearly bad at it. And then when he's called on it, he's just like, yeah, I was lying. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's never going to learn to lie, is he? Um, yeah, so he helps us to get out of this um, situation in a terrible manner, but but he does help. Um, what was it? What was it? Oh, yeah, Patsy and Benny go to find the farmer. And yes. Because like, Benny's figured out you know, his plan all along. Was, you know, he's the one who took the top off the trench. He wanted to drive a van into it because he wanted to do the, um, the local government, didn't he? Because he wanted to, you know, make money that yeah, way. Yeah. I mean, they just pay out. And it's like, I, that, that sounds pretty dangerous to me as well because that would be hard to do without... And even accidentally doing yourself a mischief. Yeah. And you would kind of think the, um, you know, they were the council or whatever. I don't know what they call them in America. But we call them like local councils here, don't we? Um, that they would actually look into, you know, what happened with the trench. How did, this isn't like a little thing that's been lifted off. <laughs> they would want to look into how has this been moved? Yeah, but well, he's hoping know. that they wouldn't figure it out. But the thing which I want to know is he was driving down the road at quite a lick. Like, if you can do it to fake it, surely you can just put the handbrake off and you just kind of roll it into it. Yeah. But also, the other bit was that when they went back and they found all everything had been replaced, they, they were saying about machinery had put some of the bits back and some of them had, like, a crowbar or something. And I'm thinking, did it, at no part on the farm did they go along and go, look, there's the machinery that could have done this. You know? To say. I don't know. I'm yeah, not a detective. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't find any machinery. Well, it's a farm, know. though, isn't it? You would expect that machinery to be on a farm. Yeah, but you, you can't know, necessarily say that. That's... Not all but farms. I mean, like a chicken farm. Yeah. We're not talking about. There's no mention of other farm animals on there. Yeah, but chicken How farm, much, yeah, you know. Do you have seen... machinery? Do you have like heavy lifting JCB sort of? Machinery? I'll tell you, those chicken Who huts knows? weigh more than you think. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm guessing he's got some machinery around and he just didn't show it, but I don't know. Unless he's got yeah. farmer friends that he borrowed something off of. Ooh, also, if you think about it, this is a pretty unconventional mobster story. The mobster and the chickens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean obviously I mobsters like this kind of like the uh yeah, it's kind of the um mafia kind of uh, setup yeah. a bit. Like shaking someone down, but uh, I suppose they shake any businessman down. But it's kind of just funny. It's like mafia chickens. It is. It's like a low budget mafia, though, isn't it? Because, like you say, <laughs> you know, like a drug, sort of drug cartel, or do you know what I mean? And it's like real high price, and it's just like the economy mafia, really. So we deal in chickens and eggs. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, the egg came first. Let me explain it. <laughs> And was bought by the mafia. Yeah. yeah. Which, which came first, the mafia or the egg? Mafia. I'm not sure. I'd love to know how Marlon Brando would be in that episode. 
wouldn't you, discussing the eggs? So you Great get a chicken, a chicken, a chicken head. You, you get a chicken head. In your, you'd have a chicken head in your bed instead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh this be great. I'd love to see him do that. Yeah, were well, you saying one egg in each cheek? Yeah, you know, because his like, cheeks are like full and puffy, aren't they? Like, the way, I'm the third of my first week, so these are a bit bigger than the cotton birds. Oh, he's just amazing, like man. <laughs> well, like, the eggs would be quite big. That would be quite difficult. You don't know how big his cheeks were in real life. Did you ever meet him? Could have been eggs. Yeah, yeah, we used to hang out all the time. We were buds. Oh, Miles. <laughs> Miles B-Dog, as I used to call him. <laughs> yeah, oh. we went to many of those weddings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we kept on asking him for favours. He was not happy with us about that. Well, apparently, no, you can't turn, can't turn you down on the day, can you, at the wedding? Yeah, apparently not. You asked for it. No, they can't no, turn you down. No, they can't turn you down. Right, so we yeah. asked him for, We asked him for a big screen TV. We did. We asked him for a chicken as well. Yeah, chicken and big screen TV. <laughs> That's us happy. <laughs> Ian wanted an egg. I wanted a chicken. I didn't want an egg. I'm a vegan. I'm All right. Not oh, my egg. Want the chicken not right? my egg. Not my place. No. Well, you don't. You want to save the egg from being eaten by someone else. Well, I'm not doing very well in this house. You eat nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. The vegan police are out. <laughs> Anyway, Michelle, yeah. I, have we mentioned, I don't know if we've got to it yet, but have we got to the bit where he's got the little um, treadmill, which he's manually operating for the chicken? Yeah, no, I think that, yeah, I did mention that earlier on, did we? I think that was when he was explaining to um, Benny at, when he first goes to the farm, like what he's doing, what he's trying to keep, uh, create and everything, and he's, he's saying how, you know, he's Chickens are going to live longer because they're exercised, and, and he's just sitting there, isn't he? Just like wheeling this little treadmill around with his poor chicken. <laughs> Sorry, can I just what? check in a minute? This lady uh, is a woman after my own heart. I just had to put it on there. She is absolutely right. Best eggs wrapped in tin foil. Easter eggs. Oh, uh, I was thinking, yeah. so why, are you, why are you wrapping an egg in tin foil? Sorry, well, so I'm, you a mean, I'm assuming you're meaning to Oh, I got it because I love. <laughs> I'm like, yay, chocolate Easter eggs, woo, <laughs> hoo, 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 hoo. Yeah, I got I'm it. Go the egg, the egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. I would say we can't enjoy those either, but you can get vegan Easter eggs now. You can yes. get vegan ones, yeah. We can. Yeah. Now you're gonna have to jog my memory a bit because I watched this episode yesterday. Not all of my notes are making sense to me now. Oh. Now I meant. So we know that, um, or Cadbury's green leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank um, you very much, Jennifer. So, do you know, there was a bit of disappointment for me with Cadbury's cream egg is when they announced that then they weren't using the Cadbury's dairy milk chocolate anymore. That's what they used to use. And they're just using the Cadbury's chocolate rather than Cadbury's dairy milk. And they turned around and said, well, we never promised you it was Cadbury's dairy milk. And it, we always said it was just Cadbury's. Cream well, what's the difference? What's Cadbury's chocolate as opposed to Cadbury's dairy milk? I, I thought they were the same. No, they're not apparently. Anyway, that was a whole thing. Um, yeah, just so. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so Thatcher and and Benson have gone to the farm now. Somehow, do they they end up on a truck or something? Yes, they do. Thatcher yeah. and yeah, they they sneak they stow yeah. away. Yeah, that, that's it. Though I think the um the bad guys taking the bad guys like the bad guys are taking the chickens or the eggs somewhere, and Benton and Thatcher jump on board. That's it. Yeah. I've written down about some um, <laughs> the cellular. <laughs> you know, it's like nowadays that's so funny. Like Benton hasn't got a mobile phone. We like to Thatcher. Do you have your cellular phone? <laughs> It's like, well, it's like it wasn't quite rare for people to have it phones back in those days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they, they've said that it's the amount of horror films where they have to write write in, oh, my phone's out of signal, because otherwise a mobile phone just kind of solves it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so they're um, yeah, on the truck or something, and cause then they phoned up um, Ray so, they can, so he can like, track, track down this van. Um, and you know, typical Benton. He's like, oh, I only caught a, a glance at the um, at the um, number plate, and then he's just like, oh, <laughs> he's 
he knows the whole yeah. thing. Like, I just yeah. of it, but I know it. <laughs> that is a lovely touch. It's like, it's like even then he's trying to be modest. And they've also got the bit where uh, Benny says it's like... Uh, Oh, I'm not sure if I should make the call. There may be charges implied from this, which are outside of your package. <laughs> like, in the life and death moment, he still goes like, oh, I don't want to put a charge on her phone. Oh, yeah. And the bit where Ray shouts out for, um, I'm a, I've had a mind block, Catherine Bruyere. Um, Elaine. Elaine. Shouts out for Elaine. Elaine. She's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's right like, behind yeah, him and yeah. she's going, it's like, uh, how am I going to get, like, there could be hundreds of trucks yeah. based on this license plate. They found that truck pretty damn quick. Yeah, well, there could be hundreds. Turn out there was just one. Yeah, it had to be that one, the dairy truck. Yep. There you go. Do you see, yeah, you see, tracked it down to a dairy transporting truck. Yeah. So that could have took weeks and months of track. Luckily, it didn't, <laughs> though. It not No, they are just too darn good. Yes. What's your point? I, do you know what? I don't have one. I'm not surprised. No, fair days. <laughs> Next. Yeah. So they end up in this. Uh, <laughs> they see that industrial building where it's full of eggs. And they find out the um. I guess you can call him a mafia guy now. I don't really know what he was. Uh, but he was after all the research and that some farmer had been kind of doing for these eggs. And he's thinking, well, I'm gonna have these chickens. I'm gonna make these low cholesterol eggs. I'm gonna make lots of money off of these. Uh, unfortunately, these. I know they had the chickens by that point, so they sold them, didn't they? Uh, but he sees yeah. there's a, a cam- yeah, so there's a camera, and he sees Benton and and yes. Thatcher on this camera, so they go after them. And I thought the next bit was like it was something out of like the old Batman programs or something, because <laughs> they captured sixty six Batman. Yeah, yeah they've got a guy who's been hung over the eggs, oh, like the, yes. the in yes. the big bat, and Nicholas says it's like. Of course, they're going to dip them in the egg yolks. I said, you know, I don't think they've separated off the eggs. Looks like this is, we'll just separate <laughs> off the egg yolks. The egg whites. We don't want to, you know, the, the yolk is much. The yolk is much better for da- dunking someone in. You've got a massive yeah. bag. Why have you got a massive bag of eggs anyway, like that? Because they maybe sell it for protein drinks. I don't know. You know, they got. They're, they're going to waste it. It did. I remember the. Do you remember the old? Uh, you can get like, cartons of eggs. I think you could buy in America. Oh, yes, yeah. you can. You're right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't show. But also, um, well, we're, we're in Canada there, though. No, it's in in the show, it's in <laughs> America. I'm joking, because we're meant to think it's... Oh, no, we are in America, aren't we? Yes. But it's set in Canada, isn't it? No, it's set in America, oh, gosh, but it's filmed in Canada. Filmed That's in it. Canada. What I meant. You've got it the wrong way around. Yes, I have. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, because we've often seen a little van go past and gone, ooh. Oh, yeah, there's just little things. If you look very closely, you can see, like, they are so good at disguising that uh, Canada is Canada and making it look like Chicago. I love, like, the little touch, like, the mailboxes and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you look very closely, every now and again, you get something like a truck will go past. If you look by the license plate, you can see a little maple leaf. Or something like that. Yeah. It's just little, very, very small things. It's very hard to find them. Still not found any pennies, like uh, Paul Gross has told no. us is in every episode. But yeah. <laughs> they're everywhere, I'm... aren't they? But... Apparently. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go a little bit British here, and I'm sure car- uh, Carry On Films. Yes. And do you remember there's one called Carry On Screaming? And at the end with Kenneth Williams, and he gets put in the wax, the big vat of wax, which is the equivalent of that vat of egg yolk. But he goes down, they go, he goes, infamy, infamy, they've all got it infamy. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. <coughs> That's what that I reminded me of. <laughs> Went a bit British. So it's a mixture of uh, Batman 66 <laughs> and the Carry On movies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, so That's where were we? He's been, dipping... He's been dipped. Yeah. He's been putting the eggs. Yeah, so they're trying to get information out of him. He doesn't want to give it. So then they dip him down in this oh, egg. And he's there, he's prepared to die for his chickens. I know. And he, he comes back up and they're like, are you going to talk now? He's like, yeah, 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 I'm going to talk with you. I'm going to talk. No, I'm not. And they're like, oh. I'm not my chickens. <laughs> it's just like, this, this is so juiced out though. You've got this kind of really serious moment where a guy's going to die because he's getting dipped in this liquid. But the fact <laughs> that the liquid's egg is so ridiculous, it is peak yeah. juice out, really, right yeah. there. 
they pulled it off, I thought. <laughs> it's so no, it's silly, perfect. But, you, don't, yeah. you don't question it until you think about it and you go, that's Eggie's being dipped in like he's a soldier <laughs> or something. Perfect. Like kind of like if you were reading a soldier. It. Yeah, soldier like bread, like the bits of bread you But put. I don't know if everyone calls them bread so, uh, soldiers. What else would you call... Right, anyone out there, if you call slice of bread that you dip into an egg, if you don't call them soldiers, tell us what you call them. But, yeah. like, usually it's a bit of bread or toast that you dip in the egg you and you eat it. You cut them in it. slices yeah. and dip them in. Yeah. They're soldiers. The I've never had them called anything else. I don't know if they're worldwide or not. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Do you have soldiers around the world if you're watching? If you're not watching live, let us know later. Yes. Yeah. Hot I kind of a universe. I don't know. I but thought yeah, so. I assume. <laughs> Never yeah, assume. if you were just reading the script, you would just be reading it again. Is this going to work? <laughs> this sounds mad. Is this going to work? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like a soldier. What's a soldier? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm in military uniform. No, no, no. There's bits of bread. <laughs> <laughs> we cut yeah, them up. Like a little bit of... <laughs> we mm -hmm. take the top of the egg. Oh, so, yeah, we and then... The top of the egg? Can I say again? Have we gone past Dippy Egg? We're just about so to. Move. <laughs> yeah, moving We're on from up. Dippy Egg. Moving on swiftly. <laughs> um, so after this bit, this is where um, Benson and Sato get stuck in an incubator. Mm, they do. <laughs> yeah, so they get locked in there. So it's very hot. Chicka one. <laughs> They're getting all sweaty. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know it's it's one of those lovely moments where Benny is definitely, you know, Benny on some level is aware of what's going on, but he's just concentrating what he's doing and doing the lock. She's trying to confess something to him. Oh, and I love the bit where it's like, take up your tunic, Benny. Yeah. It's like, do you know what? Takes I thought, off his tunic though? and just takes away. You thought it was going to be wired from the bra. I thought she was going to take her, like, to use his tunic to put on her because she was going to take the underwiring out of her bra. That's, that's the tradition. I, I think that's what they're turning on the head. Yeah. I, I think they purposely did that. They're turning that thing on the head. So it's like, again, that whole thing of like, it would usually be a trope that the woman has to get the underwire from the bra. But instead, she gets the thing from his tunic, which is, I, I like that touch. That's really good. Like, like yeah. <laughs> I wire that long out of mine. Yeah. Like, Hang on, I only said like seven, whatever it was. <laughs> All right, stop uh, showing off with your big boobs. You make a coat hang around. <laughs> stop, what do you mean stop showing off I'm there like you know, oh, I've got the wire from my uh, boxer shorts I mean I'm not saying yeah. that I need I, I'm not saying that I, I'm so impressive that I need underwiring in my boxer shorts I'm just going to lay these out there yeah he's just going to say he straps it to his ankle next but I'm <laughs> oh, I thought you were just that shocked at me <laughs> talking about boxer short underwiring. <laughs> He's hiding behind the table like, like I can't see him, but his big butt is sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say nothing. Oh, I was going to make a joke. We've got an incoming. I'm afraid I'm going to get attacked again. Oh, oh, oh Benny said about the cat. He's here. <laughs> Oi, I know you're there. <laughs> wow, well, he's in a mood. <laughs> um, <laughs> where were we? <laughs> At this stage, I have um, no idea. <laughs> yeah, but there was um, quite a moment there with the um, incubator, as well as all, you know, Benny having to take off his top when he was, like, fiddling around, like, trying to open this incubator and, like, you know, she's concerned. We're stuck in here. Maybe we won't get out. I want to tell him how I feel. It's like she's trying to like talk to him, and he knows. He knows what she wants to say. So that's yeah, quite interesting. Like, like you know, saying like Paul was saying in the interview, like you know, he's playing a character that's not aware on the about the effects that he's having on women, but he knew. <laughs> I think at this point, I, I he feel like knows. the fact this left a bit ambiguous. Like, how much is he not aware? How much is he? Choosing not to be. I think there's definitely mm -hmm. an element of that in there. Yeah. You know, it's like she's like struggling to get this out and he's just like, 
looking at her like are you gonna say it no okay i'm gonna carry on <laughs> he's like looking back oh, and no. forth back and forth yeah. <laughs> he's so he thinks he's a baby. He does. He, this is how he, he likes to lay like he's a baby. He's a baby. He's a baby. <laughs> my buddy. You mummy's baby? Yes, you are. Yeah, <laughs> you're mum's baby. The breastfeeding gets pretty inappropriate, though. <laughs> yeah, but I've told you to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> this okay. is what you get. <laughs> 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 um, anyway, um, yeah, and then I think Benny even says to her at one point, he's like, I know. You know it's like, he knows what she's trying to say, which he never does say. But then yeah. there's this great bit after they've escaped from the incubator, and this poor <laughs> farmer's still kind of like hanging, isn't he? <laughs> like, threatening to dump yeah. him again. <laughs> and um, Benny's like, you know, like, how good you're throwing. She's a pretty good thrower, and he's like hands her an egg, and he's like throw it at the switch, and there's like an off switch or something. What a great arm she's got! She's just like <laughs> throw this egg. It's, it's really quite easy when you think about it. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous! Like the the idea that an egg could activate a light switch, but it's just genius. I yeah. I, I don't care. It's not realistic. I don't care. It would never happen. Yeah. It was, it was a bit of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it was, it was great. It was great. Yeah. It's great. Oh, it's great. While this is going on, Ray is actually the, um, arrived here. They, they've tracked it down. And Francesca's there as well. I don't really know why he's taking Francesca along. But, you know, Oh, she just arguing. said she was going, didn't she? She said, I'm coming yeah. with you. I think it's probably because yeah, he has the 24,000. Okay, I think money, I'm yeah. We're just going to attempt another crossover. I think we can go back to our iPad, which might be slightly better quality. Uh, so, excuse, there'll be. Oh, oh, if Benny doesn't trip over it. Well, we're going to try and make it so it doesn't. Right. Are we back? Why am I not disappearing? Why am I not disappearing? Okay, sorry about that, guys. That's Yay. a bit better. Yay, hello. Yeah, the sound quality a bit better when we're on the iPad. I think I think there's not such a lag by the sound of it. Yeah. And is the drink service a bit better now we're back on the yeah, iPad? Yeah, of course it is. Here you are. <laughs> drink service is here. You don't want another one? Oh, yeah, there you go then. Thank you very much, oh, baby. Right, fine. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> Benny, where, where were we at? Um, yeah, so Ray and Francesca, and they're, they're having an argument about the money, about this lottery money. Yes. And I think, is it when, I think Ray draws his gun or something, and the ticket falls out of his pocket, which they haven't realised at the time. And then they end up meeting up with um, Thatcher and Clinton. And there's a, there's a fight that's going on, isn't there? Yeah, the yeah. shootout. Yeah, of course, there's a shootout. And then I think he tells, like, Francesca, you know, get out of it. So she kind of gets out of the way. And that's when, is that when she spots, like, <laughs> there's some ticket that's on the floor being eaten by the chicken. Oh, it's so... He hears a scream. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you stay I'm there. I'm sure there's a morality tale somewhere in there. The idea that it's like you're getting so greedy over this yeah. ticket, fighting over this money, and everyone ends up with nothing. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Yes. So he has a scream, so Ray goes to see what's going on. Cheers. Cheers. And then you hear Ray scream. <laughs> and Benny goes to see what's going on. And then there's just this ticket on the floor and the chickens are just munching away at it. <laughs> As they would. And what came first, the that? lottery ticket or the egg? Well. But would they do <laughs> Would they actually go for a lottery ticket? Well, it might have been in his pocket next to, you know, he's had his hands covered in prosciutto from the sandwich. Yeah. He goes to touch the ticket, prosciutto's up the ticket. So, <laughs> now you thought, so Mike, Kurt, cheers. that sounds like a euphemism. Prosciutto up the ticket. Cheers, sir. <laughs> That's a euphemism. Prosciutto up the chicken. Up the chicken. No. Prosciutto up the chicken. Don't prosciutto up the chicken. That's disgusting. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Here's Sarah. <laughs> oh, you dear. poor chicken. Oh, poor that's chicken. another question. What came first? <laughs> that, that sounds like, actually, we before have been to a vegan, 
vegan fairs like okay because me and michelle are vegans nicholas not but we've gone to some vegan fairs and they got these t-shirts which like vegan is a, a lifestyle not a dietary choice and like quite ang- angry slogans like I, i'm not all for that because personally like okay, when i started being vegan i did do it for dietary reasons then i might become more ethically minded but it does sound like something that they they put on one of those t-shirts don't prosciutto up your chicken but to me i mean I always think that it doesn't matter how you come into being a vegan. Surely it's a good thing from their point of view that you are vegan. And then people might get themselves more educated. So yeah. isn't it a good first step? But actually, yeah. you say about the weight side, you did come in at the weight side, but you've become very much more ethical about it now. That's what I'm saying. I mean, then got yeah. more ethically minded. Yeah, so, you have. Um, so things change over time. Yeah. But I think having that first step, you should be encouraged no matter how people get there. But that's besides the point. It's just yeah. don't pursue so vegan. By the way, if anyone is a t-shirt maker out there and wants to, to design the don't prosciutto up the chicken t-shirts, <laughs> please get, please have that. Just send us the link. We'll buy yeah, one. Yeah, we can have that and then boobage on the back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, don't shoot up the chicken. Boobage. Do South by Southeast. We have to get those t-shirts made with no explanation and wear them everywhere. Yeah. Hashtag boobage. Yeah. We will never explain it when people ask. <laughs> yeah. Listen to the episode. Which episode? You can find out. You've got to listen to the back catalog. Yeah, listen to them all until it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Would you have to have like a chicken? Ah! They're, the they're like, I want the first episode of your podcast. Nothing's made sense so far. A few more episodes. Keep <laughs> watching. <laughs> this show will make sense. Nothing else will. Yeah. Well, there you go. Oh, shame if you could name an episode, you'd have to call this pursuit of the chicken. <laughs> Don't pursuit it. Don't oh, push out of the chicken. She's determined to push out of this chicken. You do not push out of the chicken. Oh dear. Hashtag poomage. My dirty talk needs a lot of work doing on it. Hashtag <laughs> poomage. Like, hey babe, do you want to push out I just met you and this is crazy. But how about we push out of the chicken? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Is our message? Yes, don't. <laughs> yes, don't. I mean, I know this 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 show doesn't often make sense, but what what's happened here? <laughs> what are we doing? We've here? got back together like we always do, and it always ends up like this. I think <laughs> I think lockdowns made us worse. No. I think we we no. lost the slim grip, slim the slum grip on reality we had. So Connery died since the last episode. Anyway, where were we? The chickens. Reading the lottery ticket. Yes. Yes, Michelle, stop getting distracted. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much the end of the episode, though, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a good I think we need to stop there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was the moral. That was, you know, lots of morals in the story, isn't there? But yeah. Like, you know like, what I'm say, isn't it? No. Um, give me the information I seek. Um, can you tell me what the best moments of the week? Mm. Uh, oh. uh. <laughs> make my own jingles this week. So, Michelle, uh, what is your favourite? We're going to start off with the favourite Stephen Baker moment of the week. Uh, there wasn't a huge uh, amount single. of Stephen Baker in there. There's one. Sorry? Isn't, isn't there only one? No, there's a couple. So there's a bit. He's in, yeah, he's in a few scenes. So I think probably everyone's is going to be the same. But he's got a bit at the beginning. What other scenes is he in? Let's see. Well, he's got the bit where they say about oh, um, Woolly, Woolly, is it the eggs he's after? And he went, oh no, something about Milky Duds. Milky Duds? Oh, Milk Duds, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's he's like only he interested in them. So. Oh, and they say that they say in this episode it's very interesting about um, oh, it's harder to kick than heroin. It's actually meant to be true that mm. kicking sugar. Oh. Uh, from withdrawals is uh, worse than heroin withdrawal. Not if surprised. you've got a serious sugar addiction, it's meant to be worse. Yeah. Apparently. Uh, well, yeah, so, like, oh, you can't sugar. yeah I, I'm going to say it's got to be the first moment yeah. with Deef, like on, on the trail of the Snickers bar. See, my yeah. moment was when he was walking along in the city without a lead on. That's impressive. Yeah. So that's your Deef moment. Yeah, really? I think so, because I think of Benny. And I think, wow. I mean, he does go off lead. He's got good recall in parks. I can never walk through the city. By the way, yeah, yeah. This is the, um, we should explain again for new uh, viewers slash listeners. 
We have the best moments of the week. So it's the best uh, best Ian Baker moment of the week, best um, uh, most American of the week, and most Canadian of the week. Mm -hmm. And they don't actually have to be American or Canadian. They just are people who are extorting those values. So you get some episodes where you really haven't got any Canadians apart from Benny, and you're only allowed to choose each Canadian or American once. Yeah. So if you have them, you can't have them again. Otherwise, this stops us uh, picking Benny every week. <laughs> Yeah, who is it, Benny? Benny, Benny. Oh, Buck Fogg's using this one. Benny. Him. Best female, <laughs> Benny. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, best slash most Canadian of the week. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go first in this one. I'm gonna choose <laughs> the Eggman because anyone who chooses to risk their life for a chicken, that is the Canadian kind of nice <laughs> to play, surely, right there. That's that's what that exemplifies. Benny is squeaking his toy to that one. Nicola, what's I'm your... Eggman for exactly the same reason. Michelle? Oh. We're all going Eggman. I think we're all picking the same things, aren't we? We yeah. are the Eggman. We're all being Eggman. <laughs> yeah. And most American of the week. Now for me. Oh, actually, no, it's your turn to go first. Okay. Um, I don't know if we'll all go for this one or some of us will. Mine's the barber. The barber is the most yeah, American. Yeah, because he just knew what was going down on the streets. Oh, on the streets. On the like... streets. Oh, he yeah. knew. Yeah. Yeah, that's my choice. Dun-dun. Shall? He was mine. Yeah, the barber was also mine. He was, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking maybe, now, oh, you see, now you, now you got me torn. Because I was going to go with the mobster, because, you know, mobsterism, like there is a, a certain American tradition of mobsters, you know, and, and that kind of mafia of the Italian-American kind of uh, breed. Uh, so that's certainly part of the American yeah. psyche. But look, I, I can't break this unity up. Let's go all, all go the barber. There's <laughs> something very American as well. So, yeah. Um, there's one more I'd like to bring in, if that's okay. Cool. And the reason I didn't put this person in America or Canadian, because I think this could be any nationality shout out, um, to Thatcher sitting there and not being swayed. That's Thatcher with an F. Thatcher with a T-H. Not as but, fuck off with a no. F. Language, language. Come, this is a funny show. If anyone, My ears are offended. <laughs> anyway, for any female out there of any nationality that absolutely, and we all should know our self worth as we're females, that sit there and go, no, I'm not furthering my career with you. Is that worth with an F? Bugger <laughs> off. Look, That's got an F, two Fs. Anyway. In the end. That's my thought. So I think shout out goes to her. She knew her worth. She didn't go down that route. All hands up to her. And like I said, thank I don't God, want to put that Thank God she had a big, strong man to save her in Benny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you just carry on. You just go off somewhere. But no, that's it. That's that's why I think I can't put that in the nationality. No, fair enough. That's, yeah, no, no. Um, and again, Shout out to, to yourself for, for bringing that storyline, breaking that storyline, yeah. and uh, living up to the ideals of that storyline as well, which is not taken for granted these days. Like, it's, uh, I do think it's very important. Uh, sorry, I'm going to get a bit serious for a second, but I do think it's very important to kind of see things for what they are, not go, it's like, oh, well, we like those memories of those shows, so we can't possibly talk about the fact that the people behind them were not as perfect That's as the hard. shows they made. Some exactly yeah we should acknowledge that those people were assholes who were creating it. it it doesn't necessarily take away from the art and what was created by the everyone on screen during it um so yeah i, I think it's a very important yeah. thing to take from that yeah. uh we're just very lucky with g south touch wood there's been nothing which has come to light which uh paints yeah. it in any other light than the one which we've seen it okay. and uh, all these years later i doubt it's going to if i'm honest given that they've all spoken very publicly about their experiences. Can I just point out that me and Michelle respectfully listened to you then at that point? Yeah, I don't have any F's where THs were, do you, though? No. He really is going to go. <laughs> right out the win the I'm window going, I'm going to was south. an F-U. <laughs> I'm going to south. I think, that's, well, I think she's flirting with me now. How the hell have we got to be locked out? Oh, gee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> oh, oh go away. we didn't need to see that <laughs> we got anything else michelle <laughs> can i say again i i think we're about done there yeah 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think we are. Okay. Well, so we're all in our order of business. Benny! One second. Do you want to come say bye-bye to everybody? So, oh. from me, Detective Squee from... From... Civilian Aid Nicola. And from Benton. Benton. Benton Shaw. Bye-bye. He look, he's looking Bye. Bye. That's it for the show this week. And guys, say there was a compass which the uh, viewers and listeners had. Which direction could they keep pointed in until next week, guys? Due south. By southeast. See that flow? Just, just nothing lost in all the time. We've been gone. <laughs> no, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Thank you kindly.